I want to take this opportunity to, first of all, congratulate uh, Senator Rick Santorum on um, th the campaign that he ran. I wish his family and him nothing but health and prosperity. Two things he accomplished during this campaign, I think, showing that a dark horse candidate could still win. Also, that Ron Paul's foreign policy is anti-American. He exposed Ron Paul as a crazy nut job who doesn't give a darn about the Constitution. So we, uh, I congratulate him on that, but I do honestly believe that his withdrawal from the presidential race is a victory for conservatives because the truth is Rick Santorum uh, ran to the left of Mitt Romney. He's very uh, anti-free market, anti-fiscal responsibility, voted for the rights of unions before the rights of um, of individual workers. So on that, I, I'm disappointed in uh, the way this campaign went after Florida, that he became a front runner, and I believe that his withdrawal is a victory for conservatives because now we have a conservative in the race, Newt Gingrich, and a center-right Republican in the race, Mitt Romney. It is clear that Governor Romney is the most likely nominee, but I think that Speaker Gingrich still has a chance if we go to a brokered convention and if he does better than expected in Texas, North Carolina, and Indiana, states where there are a lot of conservative voters who could very easily go to Speaker Gingrich as opposed to Governor Romney, because obviously Newt is the more conservative candidate in this race. Ron Paul is pretty much irrelevant now. He has his, you know, white supremacists and Internet trolls who are supporting him. I'm not even going to bother to really expand beyond that. Just to say that. The race is now a two-man race between Gingrich and Romney. Unfortunately, for a long time, it was between Romney and Santorum, but Gingrich kind of lagging in third. I was disappointed in the media and their lack of coverage of Speaker Gingrich and how they, when they were covering him when he was a front runner going uh, after his victory in South Carolina, how they demonized him. It was very unfair. Uh, I, I don't necessarily think that Fox News is necessarily working for Mitt Romney. But I think that they spent way too much time on Senator Santorum. They didn't expose his liberal record on the economy and that his social positions were unconstitutional uh, and would not fly in a general election. That being said, I think that the Democrats have declared a war on women, a war on the middle class, and a war on working people. But let me focus today on the war on women. First of all, I think the comments by Hillary Rosen um, who, you know, made very inappropriate comments, in my view, about Ann Romney. Ann Romney did what women have done for thousands of years, took care of her family. Ann Romney's job, taking care of her family, was harder than most day jobs are as it is, not to mention that after a time she um, was diagnosed with MS and later cancer. Ann Romney is an optimist. You always see her smiling. She's a strong a uh, willed woman, and I think that she is, above all, intelligent. So I, I think that attacking Ann Romney is not only a bad strategy for the Democrats, but it's just ridiculous because this election, I, I got news, Ann Romney's not on the ballot. Her husband is. Callista Gingrich and Michelle Obama are also not on the ballot. Their husbands are. Let's leave the families, let's leave the families alone. Now, there are a lot of women in this country who work. I believe that we ought to enforce the laws or pass laws if necessary that say that women should, should receive the same pay as men for the same job. This administration has declared war on women, not through words, but through policies. The incomes are declining. Uh, women earn about 70% of what men earn. So when incomes decline, it affects women more. The health care law that has increased premiums. Women have more procedures and checkups. Obviously, they're going to pay more for health care even than men, and health care costs have gone up 9%. Uh, there, are more, there are more people in poverty uh, in this country under Obama, and more women are now. Women at a higher level are in poverty, especially single mothers, than men. So naturally, there are more women who are now in poverty than there were the day Barack Obama took office. Elderly women are being cut from Medicare because of Obama's health care takeover, which is unconstitutional and costly. Uh, the, the, Obama, the Obama administration has cut veterans' care. Plenty of women in the military, their, their care is being cut because of this administration. The truth is that by cutting 
uh, benefits to those who rely on them by weakening this economy and by passing an illegal health care law that has increased the cost of care in this country. President Obama's administration has been the most anti-woman administration perhaps in American history. I believe that women deserve an equal chance of the American dream. We should, again, enforce equal pay laws, make sure that women are not discriminated against in the workplace. I will be the first one to call out an injustice. I just did. It is, un it is not justice, in my opinion, not justified or just, that we are passing policies under this administration that hurt all of us, but especially hurt women. We don't think about this on a daily basis, but the health care law and, and its effect, the economy, the more people in poverty, these, these are issues that affect all of us, but they affect women even more. And I almost forgot wages being cut. So this administration has not only declared war on working people and on the middle class, they've declared war on women. And what they're doing to distract from their war on women and their war on working people in the middle class is they've decided to, they decided their opponent's going to be Mitt Romney. So what they do is they use Rick Santorum's, uh, you know, Rick Santorum, let's face it here, the guy did not run a disciplined campaign. He, he went off on tangents. He went off and talked about petty issues, some of which made him look really bad. I think people are, I, I have never seen a candidate who more people united against to dislike. So Obama's team decides that they are going to try to use Santorum as a way to attack Romney. And not in the traditional sense that they're going to use comments that Santorum made against Romney, against Romney, but they're going to take Santorum's rhetoric and use it and pin it to Romney, like almost like Romney has said it. Why are we talking about contraception in a presidential campaign? I don't care if you, uh, if you listen to Rush Limbaugh and you agree with his perspective. I don't care if you agree with the Democrats. This is not really an issue that should be talked about in a presidential campaign, at least this year, because the economy and uh, our situation in the world and health care and immigration, I think, come up. And I'm not saying social issues don't matter, but I think that we should be more focused on, when it comes to social issues, more focused on putting government back in the hands of the people at the local level, because most of these social decisions should not be made at the federal level. I doubt that somebody in Massachusetts is going to have the same social positions as someone in Louisiana. You know, and, and neither of them is going to you know, be necessarily as moderate as somebody in Ohio. You have to allow these decisions to take place at the local level. That should be the end of the discussion. Obviously, this president doesn't understand the Constitution, which is shocking because he was a constitutional law professor. So I think that we need to tone it down and talk about real issues. And if the president wants to declare a war on women, um, then he shouldn't be pinning it to the Republicans. 